So this lecture is what I'm calling the protostome overview. This is going to be one of the more important lectures for you guys to get comfortable with. This kind of gives you the, as I've called it, the big roadmap to the organization or classification of protostomes. So what I've done is I put together a fill in the blank slide, this one here. What I want you to do is print this off. Okay, and if you don't have access to a printer, draw this out in your notes. This is going to be very, very important for you guys to be able to follow this flow chart of information. Um, print it off or recreate this by hand in your notes. And then what we're going to do is walk through the classification based on molecular systematics. This is kind of the more current information and fill in the blanks. So the way we're going to do this, we start with protostomes, and then the blank here will be the key feature that I want you to remember to help identify a protostome. Protostomes have two groups underneath it. That's what the red arrows represent, two groups. So we'll have a group here. These lines under here represent the features of that particular group. Over here, we have our second group. There's one key feature there. Within the group on the left here, there are two subgroups. That's the solid line here and the solid line there. There are key features for each of these subgroups. Over on the right, there we don't have subgroups. We go from this level down to this level. The purple lines represent moving down to the phylum level of classification. Purple phylum. So each of the groups down here, this one, this one, the three here, and the two here represent the phylums that sit within this overarching big picture of the protostomes. So there are going to be seven phylum we're going to talk about as we go through the protostome lectures. This is just the overview that will then lead into those lectures. Okay, but I want you guys to you know, print this off, fill it out as we go through this lecture, this first part right here. And that way you're, you're reinforcing what are the key features of each of these groups, how do these groups fit within the protostomes, so on and so forth. So this is the, what I call the roadmap for the protostomes. This is right out of the textbook. This is our molecular information. Let me zoom it up. So here's protostomes over here. And then we have spirillia, ectozoa. Those are the two groups sitting underneath protostomes. Under spirillia, we have platozoa, lophocotrozoa. And then these right here, let me get the pen. And I'll go to purple. Try to be consistent here. This level right here, this is what I'm calling the phylum level within protostomes. Purple for phylum. We are not covering all of these. So there's a bunch in here we are not going to worry about. They're just not that pertinent to what we're doing. We don't have time to cover everything. Obviously, there are lots of other groups within the protostomes but again not everything is something that we want to mess with that will have time for coverage so the ones that are left unchecked those are the seven that I want you guys to be comfortable with all right so let's look at how the big picture should be drawn out this is what I want you to recreate on that sheet that you printed off or the sheet that you're drawing out by hand. Don't just say, oh, I'm just going to take a screenshot of this or use my phone to take a picture of it and study it. Write it out. That is going to be the best way to remember this. Start writing this out. Just There's nothing fancy here. It's just simply memorizing how these guys are organized, how these groups are organized within the protostome category. Okay, So, so when it comes to an exam, I can ask simple questions like, what two groups sit directly underneath the protostome characteristics? Well, that would be spirillia and ectozoa. Which two subgroups are organized under spirillia? 
directly organized the layer directly beneath spirilia. Well, that'd be platozoa, lovocatrozoa. Name two phylum that are classified as platozoa. Well, that's platyhelminths rotifera. So in this map here, this kind of concept map, is very important as we go through protostomes. And we'll do something similar when, when we get into the next group of animals, what we call the deuterostomes. Okay? All right, so let's go through key characteristics. Some of these we've already talked about. Others we will continue to talk about as we go through each individual group. So to be a protostome, the big key feature, mouth develops before Uranus. That is the key feature to organize something into the protostome category. And remember, protostome is not a classification level. It is an organizational level. So if an animal is a protostome, the mouth develops before the anus. So as the blastopore develops or indents inward, that becomes the mouth, continues to indent inward, and then eventually the anus, this gives us a complete digestive tract, mouth on one side, anus on the other. That makes you a protostome. Now to go in spirilia, what makes a protostome a spirilia? Then we need different features, additional features. All right, so the first additional feature is that the organism goes through cleavage as it's going through cellular division the cleavage is in a spiral pattern oh and i gotta apologize this is reversed the auto formatting flipped them i'm sorry about that so you look at this cleavage pattern this pattern of development one cell turns into two two into four and then it as it develops it goes in that spiral pattern other features when we look at protostomes that are spirilia, they are primarily aquatic animals. Now aquatic doesn't just mean they're out in the lakes and ponds and rivers and ocean. It could be, well, these guys live in fluid, body fluid, bloodstream, digestive fluid, but they tend to be in aquatic or wet environments, moist environments. And most of them are going to be using cilia for movement. So that's going to be a feature. We'll see cilia. These are cilia here. Cilia on their bodies that enable movement. So some of the key features that help us identify a member of spirilia. Now, if you remember, spirilia had a, we'll call it, brother grouping or sister grouping or parallel grouping whatever here's spirilia here if you're a protostome you could go into this grouping called ectozoa ectozoa any of the protostomes that are ectozoa will have the key feature that they shed an exoskeleton so during the course of their life, they will shed and molt an exoskeleton. So the cicada here, this is the new cicada that's emerged from the exoskeleton. Here's the old dead exoskeleton. So you guys may see these in your yards attached to trees or the fences or wherever that when cicadas go, go to molt. So think about all the insects, the arthropods, they molt an exoskeleton. They're members of ectozoa they are members of protostomes. The other group to mention that will also shed an exoskeleton are these animals over here called nematodes. These are going to be roundworms and we'll talk about that phylum when we get to it. Okay, so ectozoa, you shed an exoskeleton. So you guys should be filling out this chart, ectozoa up here, shedding an exoskeleton right there. Okay, and again, feel free, pause the lecture anytime you need to, to fill in the blanks on your sheet. Don't just take the screenshots and just sit there and look at it. Write this stuff out 
it's going to help it sink in better. So, okay, so let's go back to Spirilia. Within Spirilia, we have two subcategories. The first subcategory is the Platozoa. Now, to be a member of Platozoa, key features you're going to find here is that you have a flat body. So, in general, across all of the Platozoas, we'll see flat bodies. And these animals lack any type of circulatory or respiratory systems. Okay, so you're not going to see any kind of heart and veins and arteries or lungs. I mean, they still do gas exchange. They still do circulate nutrients, but it's mostly diffusion for the gases exchanging and nutrients absorption and movement, things like that. But they, they don't have any true system. I mean, they're animals with cells and tissues, but they don't have these systems within their bodies. All right, so the two key phylum, and we'll get to this throughout the lectures, the two key phylum that are platozoa, that are spirilia, that are protostomes, will be the rotifers, rotifera, and then the platyhelminths, or what we know as tapeworms, or flatworms. There's some really crazy flatworms out there we'll talk about. Those are gonna be further lectures. Um, but those are gonna be the two phylum that we'll cover when we get into the uh, platozoas and look at those groupings. Okay, so again, back to this. Oh, back up to this. Platozoa is gonna be right here. The two key features, flat body, and then this line should say they lack a circulatory respiratory system. And then the two phylum, you have rotifera platyhelminths. Okay, so let me put those in here. Oh. So platyhelminths. Those are two phylum associated with the platyzoa. Okay, the other side gives us the Lophocotrozoa. So this is kind of the parallel group to the uh, platyzoa. And the two key features to be in this group is this thing called. Oh, let me bump this up. The Lophophore which is a feeding appendage. Oh, I guess I'll get my typos out of there. A feeding appendage with tentacles. So that's this thing here. It's kind of a tube with tentacles on the top of it. They use that to grab food and pull food in. And then there is a trochophore larva stage. That's this over here, this kind of dome-shaped thing with a little cilia on the bottom and ring of cilia around it. That's a key feature to identify lofa trochozoas, um, that larval stage there. So within this grouping, there are actually three phylum that I want you guys to be familiar with. The Nemertia. The mollusca, this will be a fun phylum to talk about, and then the analyta, worms. All right, so those are the three key phylum within that particular grouping, the Lophocotrozoa, which are part of Spirulia, which are part of the protozoma, protozoans. Okay, so in this chart, the uh, we've talked about the protostomes, spirilia, ectozoa features within spirilia, platozoa, lophocotrozoa. I want to jump back to ectozoa just briefly and mention the two, the two phylum that I want you to know underneath ectozoa will be phylum nematoda and phylum. 
Arthropoda. Okay, those will be the 